Batting down the hatches, I folks. I don't want to do another this version movie. of the Manson Brothers show. Welcome back this week. No. My brother, he's uh he's a little bit um he's a little dicey this week. I don't like this movie. Well, no. I don't like the movie. Yeah. I, it's about puppets. It's not dolls. About puppets. dolls. It's not about puppets. Dolls. It's about puppets. I don't like these me out, man. Hey, do me a favor. Um, um I, I want to grab one of the different hats for this guy. Oh, Can you okay. reach over yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay, man. <laughs> You, man? I thought I'd see you scared of anything. This means child's play. We'll be right back. And we're back. Hey, now that you've thoroughly dismantled Chucky. Oh, see, there's no reason to be here. I'm going to be traumatized for days, man. PTSD. You're gonna give me wet dreams for days now. Uh, okay. Do, do, do. Sorry, viewers. I know that's probably the most horrifying image you could ever have. It's nightmares, dude. It's not wet dreams. Whatever. You're gonna give them to me. Whatever it was, that's what you're giving me. That was not cool, man. Not Everything cool. Everything I do is cool, Carlos. Particularly talking about the movie Child's Play. This is a really, really interesting one and close to our hearts because it's shot in Chicago, Illinois. That it is. Hometown. That it is. Yes. And, might I add, a lot of films that shoot in Chicago use the same locations all the time. Yeah. You, if you see yep. them, you don't even have to be familiar with the city. If you watch a bunch of... No. But this particular I movie... i Chucky over here and make sure he's okay. Chucky, you No, right. leave him there. You leave him right where he's at. Uh, it uses a lot of different Sorry, locations buddy. that you wouldn't normally see... Uh, most of all, the opening scene, which they say is Wabash Avenue, and it in fact is Wabash, Wabash Avenue, yeah. yep. which is in the downtown, the loop area close to the lake, and the L tracks run over it. It's a really cool street, yeah. and there's these great businesses that are still around today, like Jimmy Wong's Cantonese Restaurant. I think it's Good still stuff. there. Yeah, it's great. Well, here's the thing, though. Most of the people watching aren't from Chicago and yep. probably don't give a rat's ass. About no, but we are, and we love it. So. It's nostalgic. Chicago's a great town to shoot in. But the movie itself is is really good, in spite of the fact that I don't like dolls. A lot of people get shot in Chicago. so it, Especially nowadays. Yeah. So come here with your bullet. Gun control yes. loss. But anyway, uh, 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 getting back to Child's Play. So yeah. Child's Play revolves around a, a serial killer. Yes. Played, played by, by Brad Dorif. Brad Dorif, the imitable Brad Dorif. Did yeah, I say that yeah. right? Probably not. Okay. Just, well, either way, he's a great actor. You've seen him in a million things from Lord of the Rings to One Flew Over to Cuckoo's Nest. Wasn't um, he in the uh, Rob Zombie versions of Halloween? Yeah, he was. He was, um, he was like a cop or something, doesn't he? Yeah, wasn't he Sheriff Brackett? I think so. Yeah, he played yeah. Sheriff Brackett in the, in the he's Halloween. Like a ponytail remake. or something. Yeah, he's something a great he long and hair. He's a, Here's the thing about Dorif. He's an unassuming looking guy, like in Mississippi Burning. He plays like one yeah. of the like racist rednecks in Mississippi, and he does a. I mean, that guy's Oscar caliber. He's a great bad guy. As, as the great yeah, but he actor. doesn't look like a bad yeah. guy. That's what's really that cool. Voice, so anyway, he's being chased uh, down Wabash Avenue by Chris Sarandon, who plays the detective. Big fan. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't care for him. But <laughs> anyway, he ducks into a toy store. Right, he's mortally wounded he knows he's gonna die yeah. and then all of a sudden he he's starts, got this voodoo he's got this voodoo thing he's on. doing and he's in yeah. his pile of good guy dolls and he's trying to do this immortality thing where his soul can jump into the body of something else well the only other thing there is a chucky doll. well it's not a chucky doll it's a good guy's doll yeah. right they all have different we don't names. know his name is chucky but... right so then all this lightning happens chris sarandon gets blown yeah. through the wall and then he realizes that this Charles, what I presume his last name, he's dead. Um, so case closed. Make him digs. Charles, make him digs. Maybe. No, that was Diggs Town. Oh, anyway. Right, by the way, he's dead, and he thinks case closed. So then we cut to Carson Pierre Scott. Carson Peary. Oh, whatever. Scott. Carson Peary. Very Carson famous Pierre, old Midwestern Carson uh, department store. Yeah, like a Macy's of. I don't know where else they are, but in Chicago, they're a big deal. Yeah. Anyway, um, what's her name? Catherine Hicks, the actress. Uh, from Seventh Heaven. From Seventh Heaven. Right. Who is, I'm sorry, she's a cute chick, but she's too innocent to really yeah, do yeah. anything with, I right? Think cute might be a reach on that. Well, part. I mean, she's, but she's innocent looking, yeah. right? Oh, very innocent. real milk yeah, post. Almost too innocent. Right. That's what I mean. She's too, too milk post looking. But anyway, she plays a single mom. 
struggling, uh, struggling financially. And she wants to her her son Andy, who the kid, the actor, very good, excellent. Oh my god, yeah. right, great actor. He is obsessed with this TV show. Or he does a great job. He does a great job. Right, right. He does a great job in this movie. Uh, Is obsessed with the good guy's character. And she had just had a birthday or whatever. And he was expecting one of these new good guys dolls. Yeah. And she just. It's a popular cartoon. It's a popular thing. It's like the Cabbage Patch doll was back when, you know, we were younger and you couldn't get it. That would have been way scarier, Cabbage Patch doll. Man, I'll tell you. So anyway, uh, her friend played by Dinah Manoff from Empty Nest and a million other things tells her, hey, there's a homeless guy in the alley, a vagrant, selling a in-the-box good guy's doll. Yes. Now, so what does Catherine Hicks do? What any normal chick would do when she hears there's a weird vagrant in the alley? She runs right out there. And demonstrates quite possibly the worst negotiating skills in the history of man. Why don't you tell him how that went, though? Well, as you always want to do with any street vendor, the most important thing is to sprint up immediately yeah and let them know just how badly you need the product that they have in their hands. Yeah, because that gives you just like the best negotiating. Yeah, ever. Jesus Christ almighty. I mean, sidebar, the vagrant is played by- Have you ever bought a car before? (laughs) You know? Sidebar, the vagrant is played by a famous Chicago character actor named Juan Ramirez. Love that guy's coffee. Best coffee. That's Juan Valdez. And he's from Columbia. I had a skull moment right there. You did. Uh, wait, wait, want the actress from Columbia? No, he's from Chicago. Oh, Juan, Juan Valdez is from Columbia. Anyway, and apparently he's not real. Juan Ramirez is a real guy. Hell anyway, he was in uh, Backdraft and Color of Money and Above the Law and a short-lived TV series. Great actor. Uh, so he plays the vagrant Why and he can't gives you up know the about something that actually makes money I don't or know. improves our I really status. wish I could because we'd be living big. <laughs> so he Still plays the vagrant. We're living here in somebody's basement. <laughs> He sells her the doll. She takes the doll home, gives it to Andy, and that's when the bullshit starts. Right? Good guy, my ass. <laughs> yeah. So why don't you tell us what happened? Well, so um, Chucky, uh, well, well, they actually get the first part where she's being, he's being babysat, right? Right. And, By and Dinah Manoff, yes, right? The and, girlfriend. So Dinah's there. And uh, this is the first time we get that we don't really even see Chucky, but Chucky. No, there's some things. She tells Andy to go to bed, and right. she hears, or he says, she says, he says, Chucky wants to well, watch the news. The news. <laughs> yes. She tucks them both in. The next thing you know, the doll's in the news. Yeah. And so she gets mad at Andy and goes, yeah. I said no, young man, and all this other stuff. Like Chucky wanted to do it. Chucky right. wanted to do it. And, and the next thing you know, she winds up flying out the window yes. of the Pine Grove apartments and, on Diversity Avenue. Famous Chris building. Sarandon is soon visiting, trying to figure ascertain out what has occurred. And what they figure out is there's some footprints on the counter yes, that are made little, either a match. Dog or some pajamas. So they figure out it's made by Andy's uh, good guy pajamas, yes. right? And he says, "No, it wasn't me. It was Chucky. Chucky told me, and this and that." So right away, they think the kid's nuts. By the way, this leads to one of the greatest comments in the entire film, when the when the mother asks. Uh, about what happened, and he keeps trying to blame it on Chucky, which yeah. is it's Chucky's fault. And then he says to the mom, Chucky says she was a bitch and deserved what she got. Yeah. <laughs> and the mom's like, what? I wish I, I wish I could say that to Ma about yeah. one of her friends oh my and God. blame it on you and get away with it. But when you ask what the favorite parts of the movie are, yeah, that's my favorite that's, part that's of the movie. one of them. Right there, without question. So they take, so eventually, um, they take the kid. I don't know if it's this before. So, so Chucky, played by Brad Dourif now, yeah. wants to eliminate anybody that screwed him over, which yeah. was his partner in crime. Yep. Right. That's the, the, the first guy, guy that goes. The, the, the guy of the voodoo. Yeah. So, this all centers around. It's all pointing that Andy did this. Well, right? here's another great part, is it, which Chucky gets Andy to take him on the L. Yeah. Down, down to like the southeast side, right. which you don't want to go to if you're if you're heavily armed and in your mid thirties. You let still alone if you're six off. years old right. and carrying a doll. At least at even that if, time, even if that doll is. I th- yeah, I think they it's gentrified since then, yes. but it but it's it was pretty bad. Then. The green line is not a place for anybody no, to be on, no, uh, no, let alone no. a six year old. So he goes down so. there. They find this guy, and what was cool is you actually see like. He, he uh, shuts the guy's, turns the guy's gas on, right? <laughs> so you see a little puppet hand 
opening up the thing and then you see chucky walking up the stairs which i thought was a really cool yeah it was a cool moment like so they don't hide the fact that the doll's doing this shit no. in the movie it's really cool but anyway then they take andy to this this is like i, I couldn't believe it. this children's insane asylum yeah and it's like an old medieval dungeon right like it's not for kids Obviously. I love that the doctor's sitting behind the one-way glass. Yeah, and the doctor... I've seen all I need to see. This and the, the doctor's played by Jack Colvin, who, if you're of our generation, may remember as the reporter Jack McGee in the Incredible Hulk series with Bill Bixby. I'm in our generation, and I don't remember that. That's because you were too busy paying attention to Pa's Playboy magazines <sighs> underneath the bed. Well, it's better than Bill Bixby. Inside baseball. Yeah. Anyway, so while you were watching Pa's stuff... I was learning stuff on the Incredible Hulk. Anyway, so he plays the doctor. And he's see how well of, that's gone. Yeah, so he sort of unceremoniously gets killed off. Well, not unceremoniously. Actually, it's a pretty good kill off yeah. where they give him the sh- So, again, folks, not a review show. Spoiler alert. We're it's spoiling it. Yeah. Go watch it Go again. watch it and come back. Well, so speaking of which, I haven't seen Child's Play. It's interesting when you talk about any films that have sequels. For some reason... I always end up re-seeing the sequels. I'm not the original. Times. I never see the original. I like the I like Bride of Chucky. Yeah. I like I don't remember. I like Child's Play too. I thought yeah, it was really I, good. I don't remember that one. I have to watch it again. But, but the original I really like. On the rewatch of this, I actually really enjoyed it. Oh yeah. I'm not gonna say more than when I first saw it because no, it was great. I enjoyed, I enjoyed it the first time we watched yeah. it. I, I remember we saw it and we we're like, Listen, oh man, this is good. I think one of the coolest things that this movie pulls off is you are taking a dude in a doll and making yeah. him a badass killer villain and he right? was like, bad at because the lot. doll in and of itself doesn't look menacing well, right it's it, like this big and that's where i think they hit the they hit the nail on the head by not having it look like you know like the ventriloquist dummy from magic that's Ooh. he looked creepy yeah. right and every other doll they've had has looked really like if you watch the annabelle movie it's like the annabelle doll like who wouldn't look at that doll and think that thing's possessed that like that, right yeah. exactly but this doll doesn't look anything like that it just looks like a little boy's you know play thing it's not I, the thing i enjoy about all doll movies is that when they're supposed to be one place and they're all of a sudden some other place yeah. looking inanimate right when it's just like yeah it's really creepy I, I like man it. it's good it's so creepy when he's watching the news that's yeah super, that's a great it's, it's super creepy great scene. so then he goes and visits the vo- well andy escapes from the mental institution yeah. yep. because chucky's trying to kill him at that point chucky had has goes to the uh um, well let, let, let's let's backtrack it a minute to when the mom kind of figures out what's going on the yeah the, 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 the believable moment when she's got the box right the oh box. yeah let's so talk about cool that moment. that's probably the coolest moment very cool movie, moment yeah there. Um, when it comes to favorite parts, she's got the box. She's kind of getting ready to throw it out or whatever. And, and as she's picking it up, out falls the battery. Now, this is where you've got to suspend you suspension belief. of disbelief because no toy parts. companies put batteries. Never put batteries in a toy, right, but, folks? You know, and it clearly says on the box, batteries included, which has never been put. On the box toy of any box toy ever. That and if better. there has been, I'd like to know. So take a picture of it and send it. And even further, they were private label little good guy batteries. Yeah. So so she goes to Chucky, and mm-hmm. she's like, "Oh fuck, yeah, he's got no batteries, right?" Or she thinks well, she's not sure. Maybe somebody put other batteries in it. Yeah, but who? Yeah, who did the homeless her, guy? It's only her and the kid and the vagrant. She goes up, grabs the doll, does the turn, pops it open. No batteries. no batteries. And with that, My Chucky spins around cold. and says, I'm Chucky. Hi, I'm Chucky. What a pleasure. She goes, ah, and yeah. drops him that and goes under. So then mom. she picks Chucky up and she's challenging him now to yeah. say something. Say something. She threatens to throw him in the fire and he goes, you fucking bitch or whatever. <laughs> and that's when you go, you know he's going to do it. But it's so well set up that you're like, yes. ah. it's, it's not that long. Not that long. Like that. So, anyway, now she knows Chucky's best. So she goes to the cop and tells the cop, no, yes. it's the doll. And the right. cop's like. Instead of locking her up immediately and hauling yeah, her off. Yeah, because you know he's probably trying to get down her shirt well, or so whatever. The, and you know if she's crazy, it's going to be that much easier. Right. <laughs> Only that much worse afterwards. Got but her. who cares? You know, those are tomorrow problems, as we say. <laughs> Yes, they are tomorrow problems. 
So, uh, speaking of tomorrow problems, this voodoo guy didn't think <laughs> when he showed Brad Dourif. Here's how to come back to life. Yeah. And an inanimate object. Right. This so, will never come so back to haunt me. Right. So, here's what I don't get. So, he shows up at uh, Chucky, shows up at the voodoo guy's house, and uh, I forget what his name is in the movie, but he's the voodoo guy. He shows voodoo Brad guy. Dourif how to do the voodoo. Then he tells him. This leads to kind of one of the most disgusting. Oh, yeah. Of the, of yeah, really good stuff. Yeah. But he goes, he gets mad at him. The voodoo guy gets mad at Chuck. And he's like, you're an abomination. I can't believe. So let's set this up, folks. And I'm, my brother will tell you, I'm no genius. The furthest thing. Right. From that. However, yes. if you have a friend who is a known criminal mm -hmm. and you're teaching him voodoo yeah. to bring the dead back to life and you don't think he's going to do something wrong with it you are crazy yeah. mm -hmm. there's a lot of crazy people or potentially crazy people in this film. yeah well anyway yeah. that's a what, bad idea how about what leads to this part well afterwards well then he's got a voodoo doll right there yeah. himself which why would you of have the a voodoo guy yeah why would the voodoo and he and so he tells him you shouldn't tell people where you hide this thing like, who goes, hey, by the way, I, I have a voodoo doll a of meat. myself, and it's in the pantry behind the apple jazz. Start poking it with uh, with Neil. Just on the side oh. of the generic Pop-Tarts. Unlike most voodoo dolls that are generally kind of plush and, and flimsy, this one, for some reason, has solid appendages. Yeah. Which Chucky then systematically starts breaking. And the, and the, and the arms and legs Yeah, the leg goes. And, and it, like, that's that's a horrific yeah. Of, of, of yeah, pain. it's a cringer. Yeah, it's very cringer. It's a cringer. Yeah. It's good. It reminds me of what we did in like, the Manson Brothers Midnight Zombie Massacre. Also There's cringe a worthy. Just like that in there. <laughs> you can buy it now on Boot and on Blu-ray and DVD. Did you say Blu-ray, Blu-ray, whatever I you said. You combined Voodoo and Blu-ray. I did. Blu-ray. Blu-ray. It's a new thing. We've been doing. Blu-doo. Blu-doo. Anyway, <laughs> so he kills. He kills the Voodoo guy, and uh, and now. Uh, What's her face? Catherine Hicks is trying to convince Chris Sarand, and it's the doll. Yep. And he, of course, thinks she's out of her mind. So what does he do? Drops her back off at the apartment, and he goes driving home. However, with my broken finger, I will mm -hmm. tell you, hiding in the back That's nasty. is the doll. Oh. And he starts strangling him, right? So he tries to kill him, and Chris Sarand is shooting at him. And now Chris Sarandon, of course, is a believer because he sees it, right? So I, I love Chucky running around avoiding bullets. Too. Yeah, that was right. great. And when you think about it, if you were shooting at a doll, that's hard to hit, right? Oh, they're, they're teeny. It's hard to hit any moving target, let alone a doll. Specifically me. Well, here's we have to we have to kind of we have to kind of go back a second to the voodoo guy because during their uh, uh, interlude, the um, the voodoo guy tells well he tells the voodoo dude that. Hey, I didn't think I could be hurt, and I got hit, and guess what? It hurt. And hey, I got cut, and guess what? I bleed. Yep. So the voodoo guy tells him, the longer you stay in the body, you get to be more human. It becomes permanent. So now he figures, I'm gonna be in the, I'm gonna be stuck in this doll's body forever. Yep. And then the voodoo guy tells him, it's the last person that you told that you were human that that yeah. you were actually which not, is Andy, which is Andy. So now he's got to kill so he Andy. Has to get into Andy's body. Got to get into Andy's body. So that's show. what he's going for. Oh. That leads us to our viewer email of the week. I got a feeling this is going to be a good one. I don't know why. This one comes to us from Joe Nichols. Oh, yeah. South side of Chicago. Okay. Hey, you know what? Uh, speaking of which, tavern style or, or, or deep dish? You know, what's, what's your Chicago tavern. style pizza? Tavern. Yeah, I think so too. I don't like deep dish pizza. I mean, listen, it's pizza. pizza. Yeah, but every, every pizza is a lot like uh, a certain other activity. It can only be so bad. I agree with you. But the problem with deep dish pizza is everybody outside of Chicago thinks that Chicago yeah. style pizza, yeah. and it's not. It's a lot like lasagna. Now, I love lasagna. Don't get me wrong. Yep. But it's not really. I like pizza I can eat with my hand. Yeah. I don't want to cut it with No. Anyway, no. Joe Nichols from the South Side asks Guys, uh, great show. Love your show. Keep doing it. Love the episode on Chucky. Thanks, man. Child's play. Uh, if you guys could come back in the form of a doll, had to, what doll would it be? Uh, now, that is an awesome question. I love it. You can uh, start. Oh, God. Would put me on the spot here. I would come back as uh, a G.I. Joe doll. That's a pretty good one. 
Yeah. Yeah. G.I. Joe. Any particular reason why? Because he was tough. How do you know? Because he had Kung Fu grip. Is it the Eagle Eye G.I. Joe? No, Kung, Kung Fu, Fu grip. grip. Kung Fu grip. All right. I'm going to go with, uh, I would come back as Stretch Armstrong. Oh. Yeah, because it was impossible to pull that motherfucker. Up. Yeah. He also stretched a lot of people stretched in up. wrestling, which is our. Taking liberty. Oh, that is the wrestling term of the week. Stretch. Stretch. Okay. Right here, tell us all about stretching someone. Okay. So a stretch kind of goes hand in hand with a shoot, but not really. Uh, so a stretch is where. The promoter tells you there's a, another wrestler who is probably breaking the rules or causing some kind of problem within the or organization. Or just in general being an or asshole. just in general being an asshole. And they want to send a message. So they send out somebody who really knows how to hook people or a real a hooker legit with hooker before. or catch wrestler or jujitsu guy or whatever to send them out and either hurt or break one of his limbs. So you stretch him out instead of putting on the hold lightly you put it on and you really apply it and you cause them a little bit a of, pain. Deal of pain right you don't go so far as to break anything that would be your shoot but you hurt them nonetheless make them pulse make them feel it let them know, let them know a message has been sent that is a stretch uh, i'll leave it to you viewers out there to figure out who in this room was the person who would stretch people when necessary and who was not I was the guy when the promoter said, we need somebody to take one of the stars out drinking. <laughs> I'm right here. Although that was meant for sure they weren't making their flight the next day. Absolutely. So, that's okay. <laughs> well, anyway, that's a stretch. So getting yeah. back to... Uh, that's to our wrestling term of the week. Wrestling term Stay of the tuned week. for more. And if there's ones you're looking for, send those as well, and we'll cover them. Yeah. For those of you who do know Jarry. But I think it's interesting you wanted to come back as Stretch Arms. That was a cool doll. I had fun cool with doll. that one. Yeah. You could not break that damn thing. Well, dude. I it, do remember cutting them open, though, to see what jelly came I know, out. right? I did the same thing. <laughs> but, well, but but I think it's interesting in that, in the, like, you know, I was. Did you still buy those things, too? Yeah, really? Yeah, I saw one, and I was in a. Um, he was smushy. Yeah, where was I? I was in Nashville, and I was in a toy store, and they had, they, it was real little, though. It wasn't, like, the normal size, but I it was the same it guy. It was bigger back no, this is smaller. It was really little. Stretch Armstrong was like that was as big as this back in the day, but it was it was smaller now. But it was the same guy. I'd like to be that for the they had a know, monster below too. the belt possibilities that would exist for that. <laughs> That's why I always thought Mr. Fantastic had it all over, dude. Telling like, you, like man. no one ever is leaving him. Yeah, like if you right, like who is a girl going to want to go with him or yeah, the or the, the thing, thing <laughs> right? With his with his. We rock, don't even know if he has a pecker. Yeah, with his rock winky. <laughs> if there is one. If there is, because I got news for you. He's got the police. It's always hard. Oh, dude. should I leave now? Yeah, probably. All right. Uh, but but again, Mister Fantastic and Plastic Man, man, those guys had it all over. Uh, I like agree. The they were. And getting back to probably. Chucky. So now the cop is in on it, and they're gonna go after Chucky, which they do. And he goes back in his records, and he finds out because every good guy has a different name. Yep. Right, so it's, it's like an Oliver, Oliver, and a, and a paid off, and, and this one's Chucky. So they find out that it is in fact the Strangler, whose name is Charles something or other, and he also went by Chucky. So we that's why we figure out that Chucky Duraf wants to kill Chris Sarandon because he was part of foiling his, yeah, his plan, master plan. What's your favorite part in this movie? Uh, but the battery scene. No, well, that is that is a great part. It's either the battery scene or when he says. Chucky says she was a bitch. Yeah, was that was her. pretty funny. <laughs> just, I'll tell you, I don't I know don't, if it's I, my favorite part, but a really cool part is when they go to Brad Dourif's apartment, uh, and he's got all these cool murals painted on the wall of himself oh, yeah. doing voodoo things yep. and you know doing human sacrifice. So that was really cool. It reminded me a lot of later on down the line when Candyman came out. They had the big mural of Candyman. Yep. That's kind of what it reminded also me of. Also the Chicago of. movie. Yes, all Chicago. Yes. Uh, but I thought that was really cool. I yeah. thought this movie this movie had a lot of really Well look, Child's Play is a cool movie. And again, yeah, and again, man. anytime you can execute a, a a you know, let's call him a serial killer, for yeah. a better term, but whatever he is, as a you know, two foot high doll. And make a menacing. Very menacing. And the doll was like, scary. I mean, even though I'm very creative about how he gets them down to his size to yeah. you know. Yeah, it, it, was, it, it was really it was really well done. Tom Holland was yeah. the director. He directed a bunch of stuff, but I think this is his best, arguably his best one. Yeah, I don't know what else he did. That's that's your bag, but uh, this had to be in the. Top I would have to go back and look, but I know he did. A, I know he yeah. did some other low budget horror stuff, but this one. And let's face was, it, I mean this this 
sprouted a massive oh. franchise that made hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah. I was looking so. uh, uh, the other day, and it's I think Child's Play, it's ranked really high on the list of favorite yep. horror films from that time period. And they took and it. it should be. So many cool directions, especially when they got the bride and had him have a girlfriend. Yeah, you know, Jennifer like, Tilly. It was like doll. Jennifer know, Tilly, first of all, and, Jennifer Tilly's gorgeous, and she has a million dollar voice. Great poker player too. Yes, so, she is a great poker very player. Good poker player. So getting so child's play. Extremely nice bosoms as well, or at least they used to be. Man, you all we, is that all you ever think about is poker? Listen, if somebody told all you, all this guy ever thinks about is cards. If somebody told you you had great arms, would you consider that a compliment? Well, it depends what they're talking about. Are they talking about 45 automatic? Are they talking about M16? Oh, are they talking about a grenades? What back to the back about? to the poker game. All right. No. Back to the poker game. So anyway. But no, this was this was a great film. Uh very well done. Um, I was excited that I got to watch it again, and I think I appreciated it even more than I did when I saw it in the first oh, I totally did. I totally did. Uh, My only problem with the movie is I Catherine Hicks didn't do it for me. I think I wish they would have used yeah, someone well, else. But a li- as a as a mom, I guess. Let me say this. I don't like that. You don't like Literally, I'm not saying anything against them. No, no, no. I, I just, don't like Catherine Hicks as an actress. I don't like Chris Sarandon as an actor, and I still love the movie. Yeah. So I, I don't mind Chris Sarandon. I don't mind Catherine Hicks as an actress. I just don't think she, I think she was miscast. I think they should have yeah. cast somebody a little more. I don't know. Chris Sarandon is he related to Susan Sarandon? They were married. Oh, I thought they were like brother and sister. No, or something. no, they were married until I think that'd be weird. Until the late seventies or something like that. Jesus Christ! How old are they? I don't know. Well, he's in his eighties. Chris Sarandon's in his eighties. Oh yeah. Good lord. Hundred percent. Yeah, he looked that up, folks. I'm pretty yeah. sure he's in his eighties. Let 80s. us know. Yeah, he's in his. How 80s. long were they married? Too. Give us that one. She kept her name. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe her name was weird. Maybe her name was Bluffengarth. I think it's a SAG thing. But anyway. And maybe who knows? Who knows? She could sag all over the place for all I care. You know what? She's in her seventies, I think, and, looks and not good. sagging anywhere. No, nope. she looks fantastic. So good for her. Good no, on, good yeah. on Susan. Yeah, good. Well, on hey, that's Susan. our show for the week. Time to take it home. Uh, that's a perfect ending, by the way. It's Susan Sarandon's I agree. supple seven-year-old body. Um, anything to add on Child's Play? No. Yeah, just if you haven't seen it in a while, go back and watch it. Uh, I think they remade it. Didn't they make a series out of it or something? It's a series. Yeah, they I, I haven't seen the series. If you folks yeah. have seen it, let I'd us know. I focus on this one and, and, and yeah. keep it to those. Go to MansonBrothers.com. Drop us a line. Uh, we'll buy some merchandise. We'll yeah. sign it for you. Somehow we pay the bills, bro. Yeah, you can buy a Blu-ray or DVD from us or Amazon.com. You can get one of our awesome NASCARs that's actually in the NASCAR Hall of Fame, the Manson Brothers car. These you Manson get Brothers hats, hats are pretty cool. We got T-shirts that have awesome sayings on the back because we do put the FU in fun, folks. Mansonbrothers.com. We'll always answer you back because that's the kind of guys we are. We're overly oh. interactive, sometimes too interactive. Yeah, and we also like dealing with people. Yeah, that too. Anyway, hey, we'll be back next week with another episode of the Manson Brothers Show. Uh, keep hitting that subscribe button. Keep checking out all Better of the shows on the Arrow and the Head Show. Uh, but if you're really going to check something out, if you got to pick one, pick these guys. Yeah. You can use the loot. And we're nice um, guys. Ask anybody. Until next week, I'm going to get Chucky back, scare the shit out of him a little bit more. And we'll be back with another episode. See you soon. See you, shitty pants. Yeah.